Some of you, in, like in California and other areas of the country, will know Tommy Hicks. Uh, I, I know him uh, not only from his uh, ministry in this nation and in our own city, in my own church, uh, where he ministered, but uh, my wife labored for eight years in Argentina as a missionary. She was a Canadian and, uh, and was a missionary. And it was so hard in Argentina. You, you couldn't hardly get a congregation together. I mean, you could work for years and still have a very small congregation in Argentina. And uh, Tommy Hicks went there, and God gave him a phenomena, gave him a million souls, a million souls. The nation of the Argentine has never been the same, has never been the same. So we are talking about one of the greatest soul winners that ever lived, Tommy Hicks, uh, and uh, who, won, who won a million souls to the Lord Jesus in one, in one crusade. And he told me one time of a thing that happened. He went to Russia, very determined to say something to the people. And uh, he got permission to speak in an open-air situation. They gave him an atheist for an interpreter. And this atheist woman uh, was saying the opposite of what he was saying to the people. The people were snickering and laughing. They knew that by his looks and all that he wasn't saying that. And the Spirit of the Lord came upon him, and he began to speak in Russian. He rebuked her and said, sit down. And he did not know he had said it, but she obeyed. Then he spoke to those people, and hundreds of them gave their hearts to the Lord Jesus Christ. Uh, he, Tommy Hicks was not a regular person. Uh, he, he, he was a phenomenon in his day. And soon after, maybe one year after, uh, this, this, this uh, dream that I'm going to bring to you right now, he died. But this, in my mind, is one of the most amazing of modern-day dreams and visions. And I just want you to know about it. But I especially want you to know that it was not from a really a, a person that you couldn't depend upon. But a, a man, he went right into the president's office down there, got him healed. And the president said, give him the largest stadium. I give him the front pages of the newspapers. And a million souls found Jesus with all kinds of spectacular events taking place at that time. And so it was a, a phenomenon for that kind of man you know, to dream a dream and to tell you about it. It's worth listening to. So, come on in. Uh, we are ready. Uh, and I, uh, all that's on these papers is from Mr. Hicks. It is not from me. And so, he says, I'd like for you to read uh, Acts 2.17. And he says, it came to pass in the last days, saith the Lord. It shall come to pass in the last days. I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh. Your sons and your daughters shall prophesy, and your young men shall see visions, and your old men shall dream dreams. And so there he gives you the basis of, of what has happened to him, and you're going to know about it. It's, it's, it's exciting. You won't ever forget it. Uh, he says, this vision began on July the 25th, about 2.30 in the morning. Now, he calls it a vision. And it began at 2.30 in the morning, and he was at Winnipeg, Canada at that time. Uh, he says, the vision came three times, exactly in detail, uh, the morning of July the 25th. I was so stirred and so moved by the revelation that this has changed my complete outlook upon the body of Christ and upon the end time ministry. Now that is showing you that this vision is related to the end time ministry. And, and, and if you would, you know, get that in your heart that we're talking about the end time and this was a vision that God gave one of the greatest soul winners in all of our times, and then you're beginning to see what we're talking about. The greatest thing that the church of Jesus Christ has ever been given lies straight ahead. <laughs> that was the first thing given to him in this, in this vision or dream. That the greatest, the greatest moment of the Christian church is right out in front of us. Aren't you glad that that came in a vision uh, from God? He said, it is difficult to help men and women to realize the thing that God is trying to give to His people in the end time, which is, which is, which is right now. He says, uh, do we realize that God meant uh, when He said, I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh? He says, he don't think we even realize what He means, all flesh, all nations, pygmies, Pygmies down in Africa, you know, all flesh. He says, I do not think I fully realized. Isn't that something? Now, he'd already seen a million souls saved in one crusade that went on for about two months' time. Uh, in the largest stadiums, they would have over 100,000 present in one night. Uh, down the, 
uh, Tommy Hicks shook that nation of Argentina, and there are thousands of churches over that land today that are blessed because of this man's ministry. He said, I do not think I realize I could understand the fullness of it myself. And when I, when I, then when I read the book uh, from Joel, be glad, you children of Zion, rejoice in the Lord your God, for he hath given you the former rain mortally, and he will cause to come down for you the rain, the former, and the latter rain. It is not only going to be the rain, the former and the latter rain, he's going to give his people in these last days a double portion of the power of God in that he's going to make the former and the latter come down together. And they will have a double portion of God's anointing, of God's power, and of God's miracles. Now, I'm reading from him. He says, when this vision appeared to me, I suddenly found myself at great heights. That meant that he was lifted out of the bed in, the, in his spirit to great heights. He said, I was looking down upon the earth uh, when suddenly the whole world came into my personal view. I could see it. I could see all, every nation, every kindred, every tongue as it came before my sight. Uh, from the east and the west, from the north and the south, I recognized the countries and cities that I had preached in. Isn't that something? I was almost in fear and trembling as I stood beholding this great sight which was before me. Now, this was in a vision or a dream in bed, 8.30 at night. Uh, eight, was it 8.30 at night or 8.30 in the morning? 8.30 at night, wasn't it? Let's, let's go back here and find out uh, because he, he tells us, uh, it says, in the, in the early morning. I see, all right. No, it, excuse me, it was a 2.30 in the morning. 2.30 in the morning, July the 25th, 2.30 in the morning. So it was an early, early morning situation just, just after midnight. So he says, I was in fear and trembling and beholding the great sight that was before me. And at that moment, when that world came into view, it began to lighten and thunder. And so there was heavy thunder and brilliant lightning in the cosmos. And, and, and he was looking upon it. He says, now listen carefully, as the lightning flashed over the face of the earth, my eyes went downward because he was, had been brought out of his body and he was up above the earth like an astronaut looking down upon the earth. And uh, as the lightning flashed over the face of my eyes went downward, and I was facing the north parts. And suddenly I beheld what looked like a great giant. He saw a giant on the earth. And as I, as I stared and looked at it, I was overwhelmed by the sight. The giant was so big, so large, gigantic, like a giant. And uh, said his feet seemed to reach to the north pole, but his head reached to the South Pole. His arms are stretched from sea to sea. I could not even begin to understand whether this was a mountain or whether it was a person. But as I looked and watched, I suddenly beheld it was really a giant. It was a person. I could see he was struggling for his life. I mean, even to live, he was struggling to live. His body, now listen carefully, it's one of the greatest visions I've ever known of in my life. The giant's body was covered with debris, filth, from head to foot. And at times, this great giant would move his body and act as though he would rise up and, and stand up, you see, at times. But when he did, thousands of little creatures, thousands of little creatures run away from his body. They were up underneath him, and they ran away from his body. He says, these little creatures were hideous looking. And when he would start to rise up, they would run away from him. But when he would become calm, they would all sneak back and get up under him. And so here was a giant that was from the North Pole to the South Pole. His body is armed from sea to sea. And little dirty, filthy creatures living underneath him. All right. He said, all of a sudden... This great giant lifted his hand toward heaven. And then it lifted up its other hand toward heaven. And when it did, these little dirty creatures by the thousands seemed to flee away from him and go into the darkness and into the night to where I couldn't see them anymore. But slowly, the great giant began to rise. And as he did, his head and his hands went away up into the clouds as he rose to his feet, 
He seemed to have cleansed himself from the debris, from the filth that was upon him, and he began to raise his hands into the heavens as though praising the Lord. And as he raised his hands, they went clear, both of them, up into the sky and up into the clouds because he was a normal size. Then he says, suddenly, every cloud became silver. <laughs> the most beautiful silver I've ever known. As I watched this phenomena, it was so great. I was so moved, even though I was in my state of dream or vision at that time. I could not even begin to understand what it would all meant. I was so stirred as I gazed upon it and watched it that I cried, <coughs> Oh Lord, Oh Lord, what is the meaning of all of this? I must know. It felt as if I was actually way out in the Spirit, and I could feel the presence of Jehovah all around me, even as I was asleep. And so we'd have to call it a dream because he says he was asleep at this time. So from, these, from those clouds, suddenly there came drops of liquid light, <laughs> drops of liquid light raining down upon the giant, upon the great giant. And slowly the giant began to melt, and he began to sink, as it were, into the very earth itself. And as the giant melted, his whole form seemed to have melted upon the face of this earth. And this great rain began to come down stronger and stronger. Drops of liquid light began to flood the very earth itself. And as I watched this giant that seemed to melt, suddenly it became millions of people over the face of the earth. As I beheld this sight before me, people stood up all over the world, all nations, kindreds, and tongues. And they were now lifting up their hands and they were praising God. At that very moment, there came a great thunder in the heavens that I heard. It roared through the heavens. I turned my eyes uh, toward the heavens, and suddenly I saw a figure in white, in glistening, glorious, shimmering white, the most beautiful thing that I'd ever seen in all my life. I did not see the face, but somehow I knew that that figure was the Lord Jesus Christ. He stretched forth his hand, and as he did, he would stretch it forth to one and another and to another. And as he stretched forth his hand upon the peoples, upon the nations of the world, I could see the men and the women. He pointed toward them, and then this liquid light seemed to flow from his hand into that person, and the mighty anointing of God came upon that person. And those people began to go forth in his name to speak and to change the world. Now, I did not know how long I watched in my, in my dream. It seemed it went on into days and weeks and months while I was dreaming. And behold, and I beheld this Christ as he continued to stretch forth his hand. If there was a tragedy, and he would reach out his hand uh, uh, toward it. But then to my sorrow, some people, as he stretched forth his hands, refused. They said, no, 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 we don't want this. He says, I saw men and women, and some of them that I knew personally, their names, had lived with them. People that I felt for sure that they wanted the call of God upon their lives. But as he reached forth his hand toward them, and toward that one, they simply bowed their heads and backed away from the Lord Jesus. Be careful. Denominations will do that, and also people also. Denominations and people will back away from vision, back away from the power of God, back away from victory. And when God gives a vision, you want to live up to it in Jesus' name. And so to each of those that seemed to bow down and back away, they went into a darkness. They went into a darkness and, and a blackness. I was bewildered as I watched, but these people that he had anointed hundreds and thousands all over the world, Africa, Asia, Russia, China, all over the world, the anointing of God was upon these people as they went forth in the name of the Lord. They're going to go. I saw people, men and women, as they went forth, 
They, they had been one time ditch diggers, washerwomen. They had been rich. They had been poor. They were people who had been bound with paralysis and sickness and blindness and deafness. And as the Lord stretched forth His hand to give them anointing, they became healed, and they went forth to the whole world. Now, this is the miracle of it. This is the glorious miracle of it. Those people would stretch forth their hand exactly as the Lord did, and it seemed that there was at the same liquid fire that came out of their hand as came out of the Lord's hand. And they stretched forth their hand and said, According to my word, be thou made whole. And these people continued in this mighty end time ministry. I did not fully realize what it was. And I looked to the Lord and said, What is the meaning of this? And God says, This is it. In the last days, I will restore all that the canker worm, palmer worm, caterpillar, I will restore all that they have destroyed. And my people in the end time shall go forth as a mighty army, and they shall sweep over the whole face of the earth. So at this great height, I could behold the whole world. I watched these people. They were going to and fro upon the face of the earth. Suddenly there was a man in Africa. In a moment, he was transported in the Spirit of God, possibly to Russia or China or America or some other place by the Spirit. And all over the world, these people went. They came through fire, pestilence, famine. Neither fire nor persecution seemed to stop them as they were going. Angry mobs came to them with swords and guns like they did to Jesus. And they passed right through their multitude. And they could not find them. He says, they went forth in the name of the Lord, stretched forth their hand, and they blessed people. And I, and, and I saw them, and I said, I must tell you, I never saw a church. I, I never heard the word denomination. These people were all going in the name of the Lord of hosts. As they marched forward, everything they did as the ministry of Christ in the end time, these people were ministering to multitudes, tens of thousands, even millions seemed to come to the Lord Jesus on every kingdom upon the face of the earth because he said it was the last hour. It was, it was simply, it was simply glorious. It seems that there were those that rebelled. They would become angry. They would try to attack the workers. But uh, God had given them this message. For sure, God is giving going to give to the whole world a demonstration in this last hour of the great power of God. Men and women of all walks of life and degrees will, will mean nothing. God will choose whomsoever He will. There will be no mountain too big. There will be no valley too deep. But what they will reach into there, and they will see God bless, and they will all work together in harmony. Jesus Christ was a theme of the whole mission as they went forth. And they continued, it seemed, the days went by, even weeks went by, I could only hear the cry, sometimes the laughter, as they would go forth, bringing the last time message of victory and blessing. I watched from the very heaven itself down upon it. There were times when glorious deluges of liquid light would seem to fall upon great congregations. And that congregation would lift its hands and praise God for hours. It looked like sometime for days. And the Spirit of the Lord was upon all flesh. Now that is exactly the thing that God was doing. And to every man, to every woman that received this power and anointing, the miracles of God came. And suddenly there was another great clap of thunder in the heavens. It seemed to resound all over the world at the same time. And I heard the voice say, Now this is my people. This is my beloved bride. And, and, and then the voice, I looked up, I looked upon the earth and I could see the lakes and the mountains, the graves are open, and people from all over the world, the saints of all ages, uh, they, they came up out of their graves and they rose from their graves. And suddenly, from every direction, east, north, south, west, they, they seemed to be forming again this gigantic body that I'd seen before. As the dead in Christ seemed to be rising first, I could hardly comprehend it. It was so marvelous, far beyond anything, this giant body that had been full of debris and filth, uh, suddenly became a mighty giant. Oh, he was different this time. He was arrayed in the most beautiful, gorgeous white. Garments were about him. There was no spot, no, no wrinkle. The people of all ages seemed to be gathering around this body. And slowly as it began to form, it, it moved up into the heavens. And suddenly the heavens opened and the Lord Jesus came. And, uh, and, and I heard another clap of thunder. And he said, This is my beloved bride in whom I have waited. She shall come forth and even be tried by fire. This is she that I have loved from the beginning. He says, As I watched, my eyes turned to the far north, and I saw seeming destruction, men and women in anguish crying out, buildings and destruction. Then I heard again the fourth voice say, Now my wrath is being poured out upon the face of the earth. Now when you see this in a vision, you'll know that the body of Christ goes up first 
into heaven before the, the great tribulation comes upon the earth. He says, the wrath of God seemed to be poured out uh, in, in such a terrible way. I can remember as though it happened uh, just a moment ago. I, I, I shook and I trembled as I beheld the awful sight of cities, whole nations going down in destruction. I could hear the weeping, the wailing, the crying. They seemed to cry as they went into caves and in the, in the mountains. And, and uh, they, they, they leapt into water and trying to drown themselves. And, but there was nothing that could destroy them. They, they wanted to take their life and could not. And again, I turned my eyes to this glorious sight, this body uh, that had been changed, this body. And I beheld it and the end time ministry and the last hour. And says, Again now, it was July 27, 2.30 in the morning, that the revelation came. The same vision came exactly as it did before. My life has been changed, and I realize that we're living in the last time, and I realize that from all over the world, God is going to send a woman, uh, going to send a revival. It's going, to, it's going to clean up. It's going to clean up the church. All the filth from the church is going to leave, and it's going to be gone. He says, oh, people, listen to me. According to my word, it shall be done. We're, we're going to be clothed with power and anointing from God. We won't have to preach sermons. We won't have to have persons heckle us in public. We won't have to depend on man. We will not be part of denominations. Uh, we will have the power of the living God. We will have no fear of man, but we will go in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ in order, in order to change the world in which we live. And a few months after that, that man was taken home to heaven, taken home to heaven. What a tremendous, what a tremendous revelation. I, I have read it several times, uh, not just one time. And I know that you would be very glad to have this uh, by audio to where you can hear it. And we do have it uh, where, you can, where you can hear it again and again. And, and, uh, and pray for God. The church is a giant. It covers the whole earth that it must become pure. We must get the little demons out of it. <laughs> we must get the filth out of it. We must get the uncleanness out of it so that God can bless it with the, with the drops of light from heaven that changes it.